We're going to try something new and see if anybody gives a shit. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. But, um, I don't know. I just, again, I just didn't know if it was a waste of time or not. I have some extra time to kill right now, so fuck it. Um, I'm calling this Renew. It's like Reboot, but with my name. Because I'm not very creative. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do each time I do one of these, if I do any more of these, is take people's suggestions on if I was given the chance what would I do with a reboot or with a sequel? Um, you know, if they handed me the keys to a franchise, which they never will, because as we've stated, this is called renewed. I'm not very, I'm not very creative. Um, I thought the one that I would start with would be one that, uh, I know people, uh, definitely talked about a lot back in the day. Um, some would say no reboot. I refuse. I say yes, reboot. I insist. Uh, and that is for the 2016 Ghostbusters. Um, at one point, I think it was the most downvoted movie trailer in history of YouTube. Um, I'm not against the casting. I'm not against the idea of the all-female Ghostbusters. That's not what bothered me. I'm not against uh, 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 the director. I thought I really liked Freaks and Geeks. I really liked Bridesmaids. Um, and then you'll say, and then my main one of my main complaints is that it was mumblecore comedy, um, like most of the, the collection of people's stuff. And the ad-libs did nothing to create a structure for which the story could hang on. Um, and that was what was so big about the original Ghostbusters. Because let's face it, I, I was on another show where we took apart Ghostbusters 2 for two hours. It's not great. I love it because I grew up with it, but it's not a great movie. Um, so I was giving this one a chance when it came out. When I saw the first trailer, I was like, okay, I like the look of the ghosts. They sort of look like the Haunted Mansion. Um, and then that second version of the movie came out and fucking failed. So maybe don't do that kind of ghost anymore. Um, and you'll say, okay, well, the original one, they ad-libbed a bunch. Yeah, they did. But there, there, there's a story in place there and a story structure which the ad libs are the cherry on and you know and whipped cream on the so on top of a Sunday already uh, that you believe the world that they lived in um, before you had the quips and all um, you know it's the the famous thing about that mo first movie is that you believe everything leading up to it so by the time that we get to a hundred foot marshmallow man you just go with it at that point um, so your first thing you would do for this is there would have to be a stronger script, obviously. And I figured out a way to do that while also staying in continuity of the first two films as not to piss anybody off. Um, uh, you know, with this weird new lady Ghostbusters Kelvin timeline that they had that said that the other ones never existed, which, you know, didn't help their case much for, for angry dudes online. Um, so what you do is it's, it's right there in the, in the first movie. Peter Venkman says the franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. That's where you go with every Ghostbusters movie from this point on from 2016. Not what we got with after afterlife. I actually liked afterlife and I'm interested to see where they go from there, but let's put ourselves in the way back machine to 2015 when they were making this movie. You'd have all these different cities or towns that have that have a Ghostbusters franchise. Like you would be able to buy a 7-Eleven franchise or a, or a Starbucks franchise. Um, and uh, that way each movie could be a different city, a different comedic team, a different legend or cryptid or, or something from that specific area. I'm going to set the one that we're going to talk about right now in Salem, Massachusetts. Salem Witch Trials. Um, you would have a group of bored suburban housewives that buy into a Ghostbusters franchise. So it'll be a little bit like the pretzel wagon episode of The Simpsons. Um, and you go, oh, you ripped it off. Well, motherfucker, go watch Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and tell me that entire plot's not ripped off from the fucking Futurama episode where uh, there's like the Al Bundy character and the Peg character. They're both one-eyed monsters. It's the same plot. Um, so you have a group of suburban house moms, uh, you know, housewives 
uh, you know, driving minivans, taking their kids to soccer practice. They drink a bottle of wine. They go to those painting classes, and they're they're bored. And they get involved in this Ghostbusters thing. Um, and uh, you would have the original members of the of the movies, like the first two movies, would show up in the training videos. Um, and it would be like you would see how the gear works would be shown by the original Ghostbusters. That way, they're in it. We have a strong continuity. You have, um, you could even have Oscar, uh, uh, Dana's son involved in it in some way, shape, or form. But the main plot would revolve around uh, breaking ground for a new golf course. And in breaking ground for the new golf course, they just, uh, the town disturbs the grave of a real powerful witch. And uh, she has, she's a necromancer. She has the ability to raise the dead and spirits and all this kind of stuff. And now there's a serious threat out there. And these women are basically, you have to answer the call like the 2016 Ghostbusters. Um, and, you know, sometimes their kids have to come along as they're ghost busting in the, in the little kid's seat in the back in the minivan that's racing after a ghost. But it would basically be these four normal suburban ladies versus this, you know, cosmic entity, this, this evil witch uh, creature. And, um, you know, and, and I think that would be a way that you could do it with an all lady cast. It could be really funny. It could be relatable because they wouldn't be the quirky weirdos from, uh, the 2016 one that we got, they would be okay. Like, you know, you could have a Karen ghostbuster, you know? Um, and, uh, and, you know, is that racist? Is Karen a racist term now? Someone told me that you can't say Karen because it's racist. I was like, hey, white people, be better, and it wouldn't be. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're, they're at least relatable characters because, yeah, the, the original Ghostbusters, they're weird, and they do weird shit. Egon collects spores, molds, and fungus. But I get where they're coming from. Everyone in the 2016 one was like an SNL skit dialed to 11. Um, in this case, it could give you, like, normal ladies who maybe were a little bit weird when they were in college and, you know, they, they could have, uh, dabbled in, in Wicca when they were in college or, or, or drugs and now they're moms and, uh, they're, they're just unhappy and their husbands are golfing or doing whatever they do. And, um, they want a little excitement in their lives and that excitement in their lives is putting a particle accelerator on their back and going after the ghosts of Salem, Massachusetts, which are stirred up by the breaking ground of a golf course or a mini mall or a strip mall too. You can do it that way. It's got like, you know, high end coffee places in there so they can get their pumpkin spice lattes and whatnot. Um, again, is that racist? Pumpkin spice latte? Never tried anything pumpkin spice. I've had pumpkin beer. Not great. Everybody gets all fucking gaga over it. It's fine. Um, I like pumpkin pie. Does that count? But that has nothing to do with the Ghostbusters idea. But yeah, I just thought that like that would be the way that you could have done it where it wouldn't piss off the original uh, series fans because it still exists in that continuity. It is a jumping off point from something that was said by most people's favorite character in the first movie, which is the best movie. Um, it's more it's taking it out of New York City. Uh, which I liked when they did that in Afterlife, um, but having it be in New York, everything was just too there. And then you have like Thor basically playing like a mentally challenged sex bimbo, um, and and Kate McKinnon's character playing Hil her Hillary Clinton version of the SNL character. But if she was a scientist and and Melissa McCarthy falling down and farting and whatever they did in that movie. Um, and then the original the original actors come back and embarrass themselves in their cameos. Um, Bill Murray, as he's playing his character, you could see him like looking off camera to see if he got the thumbs up, the check cleared. Uh, but I just think that this would be the way you could have done that and kicked off a whole new series of Ghostbusters in Detroit, Ghostbusters in London, whatever, you know, and th that way you, you, you can continue this series on and the general ghost corp idea as well, where it's different teams. And maybe at some point you do something where there's a threat that's big enough that it calls all these different teams together in like a Ghostbusters Avengers kind of way to deal with Thulu. You know, you want to go Lovecrafty and go with something that's not been on screen like that. There's nothing bigger and scarier. Um, 
but yeah, I just thought that would be, and you know, you, you get some, Rose Byrne could have been in it, and, and, and I would still keep uh, Kristen Wiig, because I like her as an actress, um, and even Melissa McCarthy, if it was written better, would have been much better. She's really good with uh, Bill Murray in a movie called St. Vincent, um, which was a, it was a really good movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like, um, I don't know. I like the look of the ghosts. I thought that what they did in the 2016 one where they turned Times Square back into the 70s could have been cool in a different movie. But I feel like setting this idea of mine, this, uh, you know, thing that we could have pitched the studio back in 2016 of the suburban housewives in Salem, Massachusetts, uh, basically a modern day version of who they would have burned as witches back then, you know, and now, uh, they're there and they're their only hope for, uh, you know, for this and their husbands don't believe and nobody believes, but they're doing it. And, and that's your first Ghostbusters movie, um, that you could have done the all lady cast with. And, uh, I don't know. In my mind, I can picture, like, Ray and, and Winston, like, showing you how the trap works in, like, a really cheesy, um, like, uh, training video, like, you would see if you worked at, like, Home Depot, you know? And it would go in line with, two in Ghostbusters 2, the, uh, the commercial that they did, like, you know, the, uh, with hot thermal mugs and, and balloons for the kids. So, if you think that's a pretty good idea, if that's what they could have done with Ghostbusters, they're never going to. I just wanted to get that out of my head. Um, then, uh, let me know what you think of that. Uh, but there's a lot of shit in there that you could do that's really interesting and funny and, and more relatable to be a grounded story where you have all the things that we love from the first two movies, but then really like really sharp comedians can then add their own mix to it to liven it up without making it a mumblecore movie. And I, I fucking hate those type of movies now. Um, so let me know what you think, and then let me know down below what other, uh, film franchises you think that I should come up with how to reboot it, and I'll, I'll call you out in the episode and, um, and discuss it, and, or if you think this is a terrible idea, tell me, and I'll never do it again. Um, but that's it. Renewed.